students today we will study class 7 chapter 11 that is transportation in animals and plants as all the organisms need food for their survival so this these food can be transported from one part to another part so here there is a complete transportation of different types of material from one part of a body to the other part so here we need a system which help us to transportation of material so here the in human beings or uh, transportation of materials can be done by a system called circulatory system so in today's lecture we will discuss about the circulatory system so circulatory system involve firstly the blood so the main uh, part or the main um, era of the circulatory system is blood so blood is a fluid which flow in the blood vessels so it is composed of plasma since plasma contain different types of cells in the blood so here what is blood blood is a fluid which flow in the blood vessels and what is its composition it composed of plasma which contain different types of cells so here next is what are the function of the blood as i told you we are dealing with transportation of food material or here blood has different functions number 1 it helps in the transport of food from the small intestine to different parts of body number 2 it carries oxygen from lungs to different parts of body and also it collect the waste material like carbon dioxide and other waste material from different parts of the body to the excreting organs so in this way we can say that blood has different functions or main role in transporting the different materials so as i told you the blood contain different types of cells in his plasma so the type of blood cells are number 1 is rbc what is rbc that is red blood corpuscles or red blood cells you simply says red blood cells so red blood cells as the name indicate are red in color so the color of the blood is red due to the rbc or the material present in rbc that is hemoglobin so the red pigment in rbc or red blood cells are hemoglobin so what is the function of hemoglobin it bind with oxygen as we all need oxygen as we get oxygen from surrounding the hemoglobin binds with the oxygen and this blood carries this oxygen to all parts of the body and the color of the blood is red it is due to the hemoglobin so hemoglobin gives red color to the blood so these are the rbcs so rbcs contain hemoglobin hemoglobin binds with oxygen and gives red color to the blood second is wbc wbc are the white blood cells what is wbc white blood cells so mainly white blood cells are the fighters of our body or it help us to uh, to fight against germs that may enter our body so these are generally called soldiers of the body because they always protect us from the different germs or foreign bodies which enter our body next is platelets so platelets also present in the blood plasma sometimes you have a cut or wound on your body parts you see there is lot of blood flow from your cut or wound but after some time that blood become a uh, clot so that the clotting of blood take place so here the formation of cl 
clot due to the substance called platelets so what are the platelets platelets are the substances which are present in the plasma of the blood and helpful for the formation of clot blood clot so clear these are the blood types of blood cells and the function of blood so next is blood vessels so second is blood vessels as i told you what is blood blood is a fluid which flows in blood vessels so what are blood vessels here we are discussing about blood vessels number 1 is arteries number 2 is veins and number 3 is capillaries so what are the arteries arteries are the thick elastic walls you can see here it is the artery arteries are the thick elastic walls the flow of blood in these arteries are very rapid so that there is a large pressure on the walls of arteries so that's why they are very thick next is it carry oxygen rich blood from heart to all parts so here it carry blood from heart and go to all parts of the body so it carries the oxygen rich blood so oxygen rich blood where we get from heart it it comes out from heart through the arteries so arteries contain oxygen rich blood and help to flow to all parts of the body next is veins so here is you can see the blue color is vein so veins carry carbon dioxide rich blood from all parts of the body to heart so you can see here it carry the carbon dioxide rich blood from all parts of the body to the heart so here this is these are the capillaries so next is capillaries so here point to be noted as arteries are thick in thick walls but veins are thin walls so there is less pressure due to the less flow of blood so here these are the uh, small or thin tubes called capillaries so what are the capillaries so arteries are divided into extremely thin tubes that join to form veins which empty into heart as these are the capillary join to vein and then empty all the blood into heart so as vein contain a wall which empty all the carbon rich blood to the heart so that we can rid of that waste from our body so these are the capillaries which are very thin tubes formed from arteries as artery is thick then you can see the vein the capillaries are thin so the that artery is further divided into that capillaries and then that capillaries are connected to vein so here you can see how the blood goes from heart to artery and then from vein uh, vein to heart so vein to heart is oxygen uh, sorry uh, carbon dioxide rich blood from heart heart to artery that is oxygen rich blood so next is pulse so uh, here you can if you uh, place your four finger or middle middle finger on your uh, inner side of your left wrist you can feel a throbbing movement of the blood so that throbbing movement of the blood is called pulse so what is pulse the throbbing movement of that blood or your left wrist you can easily place your thumb here on your left wrist inner side of your left wrist and then uh, understand how the pulse rate going on so this rhythmic contraction or relaxation is called pulse so that pulse is due to the blood flow in the arteries so next is pulse rate so what is pulse rate the number of beats per minute so you can count your beats in 
one minute as you place your thumb or four finger or middle finger on your wrist inner side of your wrist and feel the throbbing movement of your wrist you can count that beats if the beats how much beats you get in one minute gives the pulse rate of your body if the body is at rest position then the average pulse rate is 72 to 80 beats per minute so for a resting person or a adult person the beats is 72 to 72 to 80 72 to 80 beats per minute so next is heart as we know the circulation of blood is going through from lungs to heart then heart to lungs so in this in this procedure heart play a important role so heart beat continuously as you see your heart beat continues your lifetime so as we say heart beat continuously so it acts as a pump to transport blood carries the other substance blood that carries other substance so mainly the purpose of heart to pump and to transport the blood which carries uh, other substance like food material and certain nutrients to other parts of the body so mainly your heart is located in the chest cavity with is its lower tip is slightly tilted towards left so your heart mainly lies at center but its lower end is tilted towards left so that's why we say your heart lies on left side so its size is so much small as you curl your finger you see your heart is look like your fist as you do that it, it is called fist so your heart is just like the size of your fist as you see your heart is look like that as i show in the diagram your heart is just like that so the heart is divided into four chambers so you can see here the heart is divided into four chambers 1 2 3 4 so the two upper chambers are called atria so for one we say atrium and for two we say atria this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium so next the two lower chambers is called ventricles it is right ventricle it is left ventricle so here your heart is divided into four chambers two upper chambers are atrium and two lower chambers are ventricles so here you see the partition here between the two chambers as it help to the avoid of the mixing of both the bloods the oxygenated bloods and carbon dioxide containing blood so partition of four chambers is very necessary so that the oxygenated blood and the carbon dioxide containing blood can't be mixed with each other so the blood flows from heart to lungs from lungs to heart and then from to the all the body parts firstly it goes from heart to lungs and then come back to heart and then it is transport to all the body parts so here you can see the diagram uh, the two type of bloods are here here is oxygenated blood that is white in color here but actually it is red so it is deoxygenated blood which is green in color as shown so here uh, the next topic is heart beat so the contraction of and relaxation of muscles is contribute to heart beat your heart vessels are made up of muscles so your muscles always contract and relax so the rhythmic contraction followed by its relaxation is called heart beat so how you listen your heart beat it is done by a instrument that is called stethoscope so stethoscope is used to feel the heart beat 
so mainly stethoscope amplify the sound of heart so as you see the diagram it contain a chest piece a tube two ear piece so each heartbeat generate one pulse in the arteries so the pulse rate per minute indicate the rate of heartbeat you can also prepare a model of that stethoscope at your home to understand what is a stethoscope many animals such as hydra fauns have do not any circular system they get a food material and oxygen from water and um, also get rid of from the waste materials in the water so mainly they have no any circular system for their uh, survival so they need to be survive in water and the transportation can be take place inside the water so taking of food and get rid of that food is done by the these animals so here we had completed the circulatory system of chapter 11 so i will attach the pdf along with this video you can write all the work in class work as well as homework notebook thank you